Unit 4, the Greeks. Yes, we are there. We are into the Greeks now, and we're going to start off with the beginnings of Greek civilization. And that really is a combination of both the My Minoans and the Mycenaean cultures. So let's get right to it. So the Minoans, they were on this island called Crete, and it started around 2800 BC. They grew wheat, barley, olives, and grapes, and traded for other things. Uh, because they had a surplus of that stuff. They were generally known as good carpenters and they started to build ships um, because obviously carpentry is a skill you need for that. Now the ships were built to be fast and they were defended well to avoid pirates which apparently was a big problem in the Mediterranean for a long period of time. That's going to keep coming up really until the Romans a little bit later on. Eventually they did defeat the pirates but the Minoans were the first important seafaring civilization they were actually before the Phoenicians, and they traveled far and traded many goods. Now the people, they uh, farmed and fished, they raised livestock, they served in the navy, the women took care of household, hunted, and went to sporting events. The women were actually relatively free. And they had sort of these dark hair, this dark hair, and, uh, um, and that's how they generally looked. So sporting events were very popular in Crete. They had an arena so people could view this. This is one of the more famous images. This is uh, uh, an image of bull leaping where the person would go ahead and jump over the bull, sort of do an athletic move over there and then be caught by a woman there. Um, and that was the, the fancy sort of bull leaping activity. Now in terms of seas and palaces, uh, the palace was at the center of the city instead of a temple. Uh, temples uh, were obviously something that was important in a lot of civilizations, but the palace was the center of Cretan, Crete civilization or Minoan civilization. Um, the cities did not need walls since the navy protected them. This is an actual image of an ancient uh, image of fresco of, uh, of, the, of the Therian, which was the Cretan navy. So what we're going to move on to next is the palace of Canossus. The uh, palace served as the government building. It was a temple, a factory, a warehouse. It included frescoes, which are very famous still today. And what we know a lot about Minoan life based on those frescoes, which are watercolor paintings on plaster. They even had running water, which is pretty cool for ancient times. Now, the palace had several entrances, so it was kind of confusing. Some people thought it was like a maze, like a labyrinth, sort of like the old school of Roismore was. Um, the labyrinth also means the house of the double axe, which was the symbol. And the merchants and other richer people lived next to the palace, by the way. This here, yes, it is an actual maze that will work. If you want to give it a shot. The artisans lived further away. The houses were made of sun-dried bricks with wooden beams. This is actually a model of a house that was found. And people entered the house through ladders. Interesting. Rulers and religion. The rulers of Crete were priest kings. There was a sacred mountain called Mount Jukas. Um, Juktus, which is in the background here, you can see it's sort of striking, goes up there. Had many gods, but their main god was Mother Earth. They built shrines for worship to the gods, and they left offerings there for them. Now, the fallen Minoans, it's unclear why they fell, but they lost control of the sea by about 1400 BC. There's a legend of Theseus the Minotaur, that's one suggestion as to why they might have fallen apart, but it probably is more likely that there was a volcan volcanic eruption. Um, and then subsequent problems with a, with a tidal wave uh, or tsunami and some other issues as well. That's the, probably the most likely, uh, likely reason uh, environmentally what happened. This one here would be actually the Minotaur. So. Now section 2, the Mycenaeans. Originally the Mycenaeans came from southern Russia around 2000 BC. They gradually made their way to Greece and they built fortress palaces on the top of hills. Uh, where people could take shelter and protect. And so up here you see here, this is, you can see kind of the outline of a fortress slash palace. You can kind of understand why that would be hard to attack. Uh, a megaron was a room with a fireplace where the king held meetings in the palace. Uh, this there is a design of a megaron. And the land was divided into estates where people worked by slaves or tenants. Uh, tenants are people who worked other people's land. And landowners, uh, also, they gave the kings weapons and protection products in exchange for protection, sort of like an early version of feudalism. Kept large herds of cattle, and they also hunted. Traders and pirates. When the Mycenaeans settled, they were visited by the Minoans, and they started to imitate some of the Minoan ideas, like language, artwork, and ships. 
Wesleyan's major crop was olives, and it made them quite rich. And this is an actual an ancient olive press. You'd go ahead and roll this rock all around there, and then the olive oil, I guess, would go ahead and be at the top as the olive oil floats. Uh, you don't want olive juice. You want olive oil, uh, which is a very small amount of olives. I've seen it made before. But it takes a lot of olives to make, um, to make olive oil um, as opposed to just the juice. Now, olive oil was used as fuel in cooking and spread on people's bodies just to make them sort of glisten. Uh, they also, the Mycenaeans were warriors too. They had large wooden and animal skin uh, shields and bronze armor and spears and swords. Uh, these are really the early versions of the Greek warrior uh, that we talk about when we talk about the, the Spartans and the Athenians. They started to become pirates and became the main sea power by about 1400 BC. Now, the Minoans and the Mycenaeans who came after them, there were other people in the region, like, well, one of them was a group called the Trojans. There's a famous attack of the Mycenaeans on Troy, which is located on Asia Minor, probably took place around the 1200s BC. This is actually an image. Troy had probably been there for many, many years. It had actually been destroyed. It's in a tectonically active place, so so um, lots of earthquakes and things like that. But here, all the different layers, when they've excavated Troy, they've found it. And the Trojans made money by taxing people going to the Black Sea, which was um, an important trade route. About 500 years after the war, Homer wrote about the war in a very famous poem called the Iliad. This is one of the most famous um, epic works in history. There was a movie called Troy about it relatively recently. Uh, he also wrote a uh, piece called The Odyssey, which detailed the voyage of home of Odysseus from the Trojan War. This has, if you look closely, you can see this, all the different places that, uh, that, uh, that Odysseus went ahead and traveled. It was one of the few to make it home alive. Um, the Homer based the story on legend, but added other details of everyday life. Now, eventually, after defeating Troy, the Mycenaeans started to fight amongst themselves in civil wars and really led to them being weak, and they were conquered by a group called the Dorians, and this is actually the, a language map that breaks down the different languages, but Doric being down here, where they were actually able to take over large portions of this. Dorians had iron swords, which really are a lot better than bronze swords, and they can uh, go ahead and shatter bronze swords when you go up against them. Uh, many Mycenaeans left for the mainland for the islands off Asia called Ionia. And that's going to become important a little bit later because of the Persian Wars. This led to a, an era, a time period called the Dark Age in Greece where trade and art really stopped. People went back to farming and hunting and kings ruled small areas. Uh, the people also started, started to call themselves, uh, started to form different communities and started to actually call themselves Hellens or Greeks. And that's still what people call themselves today. Hellenistic period is the Greek period. And we are done.